Sponsored by Squarespace. I had a dream recently, a scene of a distant memory. I saw hundreds of elementary school children walking down the street, and I was one of the kids. The cold rain couldn't dampen our excitement. Our teachers could barely keep us in line. We were grinning ear to ear, excited by all the snacks in our backpacks. We were going on a school trip, but not to a park or a museum. Now we were going to a local theater. Back then, theaters in mainland China were nothing like the multiplex we know today. They were government-funded cultural facilities. The one I went to was a large auditorium with a balcony and everything. The brutally stone and concrete walls were already aged by the time I was born. The wooden chairs had seen better days too. They creaked at the slightest touch. But the projection screen was magnificent—a two-story tall centerpiece made to mesmerize hundreds of pairs of eyes at once. It was huge, made bigger by the fact that I was a child. We had school trips there twice every school year, and it was a feast every time. Kids would bring all sorts of snacks with them, from handmade cookies to imported chocolates. It didn't matter if we were interested in the film. The food always made it a fun trip. Eventually, however, I got burned out on snacks, so one day I stopped bringing them. To my surprise, other kids continued to share the snacks with me. Though I had nothing to offer in return, they were never bothered by it. They were having fun, and they just wanted to share. My friends were sweeter than any imported chocolate. Back in the 90s, for people like me, going to the cinema was like going to a stage play. It was an artistic event, and it wasn't a thing for most people. So outside of the school trips, I never actually set foot inside the theater. Not that I would want to go anyway, because the movies from our school trips were always some black and white war movies. One of which was Tunnel War. It was a propaganda film from 1965 about communist fighters using tunnels to protect a village against invading Japanese forces. I vaguely remember enjoying it, but I was too young to even learn about the history of World War II. Movies like these were too far removed from my limited perspective as a child. These movies were my parents' childhood memory, and they were still playing when I went to school. That was the state of mainland cinema at the time. Not a lot of movies were made, and those that were made were cultural artworks, not for children. After all, cinema was seen as high art back then. There was no expectation of mass entertainment. People expect motion picture to be just like Shakespeare, classy and dramatic. I guess that's why mainland China was obsessed with a Taiwanese movie. Called my beloved, a film with a tagline of "Bring your own tissue paper, because you are going to be crying nonstop." The film was actually a critical and financial failure in Taiwan, but for an audience more accustomed to traditional theater, it was right up our alley. I skipped school that day, and have never actually watched it. Sorry. Anyway, one day we went on another school trip, and was told we'll be watching Mulan. My mind was picturing some 1960s opera in black and white. So when the Disney logo showed up on screen, all the kids were shocked. We were watching something new, something made by Americans, and most importantly, something for kids. Oh, and we were watching the Cantonese dub. Top Secret. 
起咗啊。I might be biased, but I always thought the Cantonese dub was the best. It definitely has the best version of reflection, with lyrics penned by Hong Kong master lyricist Albert Leung. The best line of the song says, "Face to face, but I am not me," which not only paints a vivid image, but also the words have their own reflections. Each line is crafted beautifully. Too bad I can't play the song for you because YouTube is a poopy head. By the way, Mulan has three different Chinese dubs: a Cantonese dub, 要高鬼，有礼； a mainland dub, 失败； and a dub for Taiwan. Ah, <laughs> 你在这。The voice actors were different across all three versions, except for bisexual legend Li Shang, who was voiced by Jackie Chan across all versions. 天地也无惧怕，让众怒绝望。The highlight for me, however, was Mu Shu. He was voiced by Eric Cot, a Hong Kong comedian slash radio host slash rapper. He never touched a girl. Remember, every time he talks, he hears the teacher say, "Don't talk." He hugs her. He's a good friend. If he hugs you, you hug him. Then you take him to lunch. Basically, he's the Cantonese version of the exaggerated, fast-talking Eddie Murphy. <laughs> That day, the auditorium was the liveliest it had ever been. Kids were giggling the entire time, seeing Mulan climbing to the top of the world, watching the Huns flooding towards us, all projected on a massive towering screen. It was truly a spectacle like no others. Hundreds of children all paying attention. No one was speaking. We don't want to miss a single moment. When Mulan finally emerged victorious in a shower of colorful fire and smoke. We all cheered. Though I liked movies before, this experience may be what made me fall in love with cinema. On my road to becoming a filmmaker, Mulan paved the first stone. Around the same time, computers and the internet became popular in mainland China. I remember struggling to learn HTML, trying to design my own website to host my cringe fan fiction. Yikes! If only I had Squarespace back then. With Squarespace, I can create a website in a much more intuitive fashion. You see something, you edit it. No coding required. Although you can code if you want to, you don't have to start from scratch either. There are countless templates to speed up your creative process. You can easily create a store, a blog, an event page, and yes, even a website for fan fiction. Start your free trial at squarespace.com/axinthecinema. Use the code Axe in the Cinema, and you can get 10% off your first purchase. Do you need a website? Don't struggle like I did. Check out Squarespace today. Just because we didn't go to the cinema on the regular doesn't mean we didn't like watching movies. Around the 2000s, Hong Kong TV stations would show movies on Sunday. Weekends were often when family gatherings happened. In those days, my cousin and I would sit on the floor, surrounded by our toys. My uncle would sit on the couch and introduce to us whatever film was playing on TV. I don't know why he's always familiar with whatever was playing. Come to think of it, I'm doing the same thing for a living, huh? Watching movies on TV was a crapshoot. I remember watching Drunken Master 2 on TV with my family. And it was shown in its original anamorphic format. It was freaking tiny on a CRT TV. Still, I gobble up every movie I could. That was the TikTok of my youth, and the quality, honestly, was just as bad sometimes. I also watched most Stephen Chow movies this way, though they were always the least interesting films to the adults. Is taken for granted today, but back then, Stephen Chow's nonsense humor wasn't universally accepted. No, my dad and uncles liked the Aces Go Places series. My dad had a real good laugh, 
when Ronald Reagan made a cameo. Why, our president, of course. Wait a minute. Soon enough, the home media became popular in mainland China. That means I got to pick the movies I want to watch. Children's comedy didn't interest my parents, so I started watching movies with other neighborhood kids. The Shaolin Popeye series was our favorite. You have to excuse the poor image quality. I don't think these movies were ever released in HD. Anyway, this was a comedy trilogy about the adventure of two monks, played by the two most popular child stars in East Asia. The series is chock full of kung fu. <laughs> Slapsticks, some toilet humor, and even some adult humor. Jackie Chan and Jet Li were cool and all, but it's just different when we get to see someone our age kicking ass and taking names. My friends and I also came across some obscure movies. One of which is a 1990 movie called The Twelve Fairies. Even today, searching for it online yields little to no result. Looking back, I can see why I loved it so much. Taiwanese movies were something else back then. The most influential films I've watched, however, were again the animations. Nearly every mainland kid of my generation grew up watching at least some animated films from Shanghai Animation Studio. Havoc in Heaven, A Deer of Nine Colors, Prince Nerda, etc. My mom bought Havoc in Heaven for me when I was six. The film came in two parts with two VHS tapes. I watched the second part once, and the tape was lost because I was an irresponsible little sh**. But for some reason, after watching it just once, the imagery stayed with me to this day. These films were never my favorite. They were a tad too classy for a preteen, too artistically driven. But a part of me, and I think a part of every child growing up, instinctively know that this movie is special. It demanded our attention, which is why we remember it so vividly. Don't be lazy with your children's entertainment. When recalling a memory about a certain movie, I remember vividly the people sitting beside me. Movies were precious commodities back then. There was a limited amount of content displayed on a very limited amount of screens. The entire family had to hurdle in front of a CRT TV. A school's worth of children had to share a big screen. In this process, we also shared our snacks, cheers, and laughter. While the films I watched were highly universal, this communal experience likely was. If people showing up to Barbie in pink were any indication, deep down we all craved that connection, that feeling of sharing a moment together. That was the reason for my dream. I think when I dream about a movie, I didn't dream of the sound and image. I dream of that journey in the rain when I was in a crowd of hundreds. <laughs>